Today, we have a guest that understands how being a performer can also inform your filmmaking skills. Also, she knows about being hot and smart at the same time, and we're going to learn all about that today on On The Fly Filmmaking. Welcome to Popcorn Talk, featuring movie discussion, news, and interviews. Popcorn Talk. We talk movies. Welcome everyone back to On The Fly Filmmaking, the show where we learn about filmmaking from the people who are making it happen. My name is Mary Lou Mandel, your host. You can find me all over the internet at Mary Lou Mandel, and I have an amazing guest with me today, Sarah McDaniel. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Th thank you. Sarah McDaniel or Daniels? Daniel. Just one. Just one. Not multiple and Daniels. Only. The one and only Sarah <laughs> McDaniel. Uh, she is a filmmaker. She's a director. She's a model and actress. She's she TV connoisseur she's smart all the time. Do it all, which I'm just like so excited to have you <laughs> on you. here. So we're gonna talk about a few of your projects, but before we get started, let everyone know where they can find you on the internet. Yes. So my main platform right now is Instagram, and it's Crotchy with a K, K R O T C H Y. And my YouTube is also Crouchy, and my Facebook is just Sarah McDaniel. Right so, on. Pretty easy. Pretty easy, yeah. Instagram's my favorite, and I feel like Same. Uh, when filmmakers come in here, because sometimes we talk to filmmakers that don't understand Instagram because yeah. they're making, like, cinema. Exactly, yeah. Right? So they're like, wait, what is this platform? And I'm like, listen, you can <laughs> utilize this to your benefit. Yeah, if, not, if anything, you can just use it as a funnel to your other whatever it is, like Hulu or v Vimeo or things like that. Yeah, wherever I think your that, projects are. I think most people are on Instagram. Instagram right now yeah it's like hot yeah that's it's my favorite it's been my favorite I always say like Instagram was my first love of social media because yes, before beautiful. it was like okay my space is there like Zanga way what the back fuck is Zanga? Oh, girl I'm old <laughs> <laughs> it was it was way back uh, and then yeah when Instagram came I was like wait this is for me yeah I can take photos and then when the videos were allowed mm -hmm. and then it's like you can you could just design this whole like storefront it's kind of like Pinterest mm -hmm. with more more of a personal touch, yes. I'd say. Because I think Pinterest is like, oh, I love these things, but Instagram is like, this is my soul. Yes. <laughs> so and you can for some people. Put it up there. So I love that. And then this is also where you are showcasing your stop motion project, which we will chat yes. about a little bit later. Cool. Uh, but until before we get into that, I want to talk to you about uh, your career up to this point. So yeah. you've done all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Uh, what got you first into the entertainment industry? Um, so I started modeling. And that kind of just came about from my friend had a clothing line. I learned how to do that, and I got into that. And once I started to grow a following, I did a music video for Tame Impala. And after that, uh, the, the person who shot the Tame Impala music video actually picked me to do the first non-nude cover for Playboy. Yeah. And after that, everything just kind of blew up. I taught Stephen Colbert how to do a selfie, and it was all just kind of, you know, growing from there. Yeah. So I think the most, like, logical move after that was to move into acting and uh, I got lucky enough to do an amazing sci-fi film that's actually coming out in September and then um, another horror film that's coming out in no I think that's July yeah July next okay. month yeah so yeah, and these are ones you're performing in yes exactly great and yeah and then I kind of that love for acting. I got to see all the other sides of it. And actually, weirdly enough, although I've been in front of the camera almost my entire career, I feel the most comfortable when I'm behind the camera. Yeah. So I just wanted to kind of explore that and see what that world was like. And now I'm here. Good. Oh, and now you're here on On The Fly <laughs> Filmmaking. Yeah. Uh, cool. So uh, let's, let's chat a little bit more about specifically some of those projects coming up because I think that they do inform you as a filmmaker. And I, I'd love to like see how we can relate that uh, for our viewers, because a, l a lot of our, our audience, they're aspiring mm -hmm. filmmakers, but uh, I always encourage people, like, do try some stuff. Do try some performance. Yeah. So talk to me about, uh, like, you, one of your first times on a set. My first time on a real set was when I did a French web series last year, and I was one of the main... It was the first time I was, like, a main actress, and I was on film, like, from... 5 a.m. in the morning, I would leave at like 12 at night, and then I would have to drive all the way back to Oxnard. I literally didn't have anything else in my life other than that for like three weeks. Mm -hmm. um, so I think showing that really made me grow just as, you, can, you can't be lazy. That was something that made me strong in that point. And seeing everything going on around set, like how many different people it took to really make something come alive, and how much you really need to have like a 
friendship i guess the word would be with the crew as well because i think that just kind of sparked more comedy and like more better like forming better ideas and things like that so i think that's what really helped me to do anything in film was just seeing how it worked from the inside yeah and i think that's really really important so like a lot of my first times on set was as a performer yeah and just kind of like you're it's so crazy to see. Like a performer is like an important part, but you very quickly learn you are not the biggest part. Yeah, right. Definitely. Like you might come in and you're like, I'm a star, I'm acting, whatever. Like, where's my trailer? Right? But <laughs> you get in there, you're like, oh, there's mm -hmm. so much more to this than me just showing up and being pretty and saying yeah. some words. Yeah, and it's not about you being comfortable. It's about the director's vision. That's yeah. something too. Is like I think a lot of actors think that, you know, oh, I think that the the character should say this, or I think the character wouldn't act like that, but you never say that it's like the worst thing to say on set because the director knows what he wants in his vision and if you say something like that it's just gonna make him not happy yeah him or her him or her <laughs> hopefully more hers than him now yeah let's let's do this ladies cool okay so you learned that and were there parts of set that you saw that intrigued you yeah, there was, uh, I think mostly the VFX was really interesting to me because they had to come everywhere with us on set and they had to watch every take and just kind of see if it would make sense to add in the CGI later. That was really interesting to me because I thought that you could just add things in wherever they were, they could be, you know? Mm -hmm. Also, voiceovers were really interesting to me because I, uh, I've done a couple different voiceovers for movies and i have no idea how they know if that that stuff's going to like match that was really really interesting you really have to be talented to see like how it sounds even without the background noise and everything like that so those were probably the two things that i didn't realize were that much work right yeah, yeah. and that that's stuff that we learn about on this show when we bring in like the vfx guys like mm -hmm. i love talking to them because yes. they're like whoa you had to make the White House explode and like <laughs> <laughs> Olivia Pope like fly away in a yeah it's like oh and then that didn't happen you guys were in Burbank yeah <laughs> and like if you need something like the sound of someone stabbing someone with a knife say like you can't mm -hmm. actually get that sound so then you have to like get later on in the studio you have to get like a knife stabbing meat or like something and it was just crazy that if someone needs you to hear a sound they know what to what combination of objects to have to create that sound right that's like, crazy have you seen the movie a quiet place yes so we had the guys from who are the sound designers for a quiet wow. place in here yeah. and just the i was so fascinated because they had to design so much in the absence of sound mm -hmm. so yeah. there was just like such a complex aspect that yeah. me as a visual person I like I don't always grab onto that but yeah. then you see it and you're like oh yes that was there the whole time yeah that's so true for a lot of things with making a movie is you don't know where to start from the beginning but I think once you kind of start looking it up and start realizing one step out after another it all starts to kind of intertwine and make sense after a while right like I want to get it I think I've kind of got a lot of things down as far as making something but I really want to venture into composing music for a scene because I think that you can make people feel on edge with a violin or you can make them feel calm with a piano or a harp so it's like something I really want to that's probably my next step is learning how to make people feel things with music yeah well I've got I've got some episodes for you to listen to yes, there please. Uh, because a lot of the stuff that those guests have taught us is you know in in how a director communicates with the composer mm -hmm. by speaking in emotion mm, you know like yeah. if you don't quite understand music like me like I wouldn't know I wouldn't be like violin eh? yeah yeah you know, exactly. I'm like but I wouldn't feel stressed like, <laughs> yeah. give them anxiety <laughs> Yeah, stuff like Press that. Press this key. Yeah. And then it was like, okay, cool. Then, then they can do their thing. So mm -hmm. uh, I think that's awesome that you're trying all sorts of things. So after you were on set, you you saw this filmmaking yeah. happening. Mm -hmm. uh, what what started to intrigue you to start making things of your own? Um. So as I was on set, um, I started doing articles because I was in my trailer a lot. And I was learning a lot about science, and I figured if this was inspiring me, it'd probably inspire other people to know these things as well. I think everyone has those random questions like, what is a squid's ink made out of? It's made out of mucus and melanin. Do you know that? I just learned that today. Yeah, that, I, but, that's fascinating <laughs> to me. But like um, we're going to be best friends because I like go down rabbit holes looking up the weirdest things. I'm just on YouTube like, was 9-11 a conspiracy? I don't yeah. know. Yeah, but, <laughs> but give me all the information so I can make an educated choice. Yeah. Um, so I started doing articles and then I realized that, you know, from these articles, I was growing a lot of 
gaining a lot of inspiration. And the more I learned about other things in life, the more I kind of turned into like a creative story in my mind. And um, at the time I was friends with a friend of mine who has a production studio in Washington, Foster Huntington, was creating a lot of his own type of like kind of 80s nostalgia videos and things like that, which funny that you say the rabbit reminds you of like the 80s. Yeah. Um, and I pitched him a couple different ideas and he turned me down for a year because I was I hadn't done anything. I was only, you know, my Instagram was still only like modeling and acting. So he didn't think that I had like the chops to do it. And um, I think I pitched him like three or four ideas that he turned down and then I pitched him one more with the rabbit stop motion and he was like you know what all right I'll, I'll give it a try let's do it and um, as we were building the puppet you know I had to source different people to design it I had to source like it was like building a skeleton it was really really complicated which I didn't understand either and um, after kind of a year of developing that shooting it and finally posting it it was it just sparked a whole new like inspiration in me that I can really you know produce and create and gather all these different artists to you know create a vision um, so that's when that kind of bloomed as a uh, inspir or no sorry as a what is the word like a jumping off point or yeah yeah that was like my first kind of child that was born that's fantastic and then I wanted to move into what I'm doing now is like a short film and things like that and they're all very very different like yeah. I'm putting CGI in this one and um, just that alone has been the most complicated thing. Right, so now with like, so you've got your stop motion project that's already under your belt, uh, mm -hmm. and then you've got some short films that are coming in like various points of production. Now you had mentioned you were more comfortable behind the camera. Yes. Like how is that developing for you? Um, it actually developed with me and my friend who we wanted to, do kind of like a travel type inspirational video to get out of the city and enjoy like the real natural aspects of life and um it kind of since then that, i think that was around like a half a year ago now it's kind of grown into its own mutated version of like finding yourself mm -hmm. um, but instead of finding me i find this cyclops that's in the woods so it's very like um kind of how i envision myself in like the weirdest form mm -hmm. um so i'm also acting in it see this is the thing is like i'm me and her we're doing everything so we're doing like creative director director produ producer writer screenwrite just yeah, all of it that's on the fly but like, it's like gotta make it happen yeah but it gives me like a whole nother respect for when i do get to that point where i can have a team to do it i'm gonna just be so thankful and really appreciative towards all of that help <laughs> yeah definitely and i think that that's that's the value of of making things when you don't have the team yet yeah because one nobody's gonna fund you mm -hmm. and like volunteer for you or or work on your project unless you have something to show Very for it true. right but yeah. you go in there you've got your hands started and you're like oh my gosh I almost ripped my brain apart <laughs> trying to do everything yeah but this is what we did uh-huh yeah imagine what I could do with a team and exactly. a budget. yeah you kind of have to even if you don't have the resources if you just have the idea you kind of just have to make it happen with what you have and I think a lot of times even if you start like we didn't start with any budget and we just kind of put together this really really complicated detailed deck of every scene and we sh we shot it out to different people and they all turned us down and then I shot it out to an independent uh, investor that we have now and we got one person to kind of believe in us and that's all it took to like get started and then show them that we could do that so it's all just like little steps to even starting with $35 and now we have like a budget of like 60,000 yeah so it really it really grows if you believe in it enough yeah I respect your hustle <laughs> so very much thank you cool okay so uh, now let's get into your project with the rabbit it's it's the characters called the professor yes okay so tell me what the concept of it is and then we'll watch a little clip so the concept is basically it's this all-knowing rabbit and he is on a cloud kind of just projecting his thoughts down to the earth and he's kind of just he's taken away from the ground of all the people that are around so he doesn't have that he doesn't have anything manipulating his thoughts he's literally just saying what he thinks because he just thinks all day so this is what he kind of comes up with and it's like the voices of all the people that i think are both entertaining and very knowledgeable like on the entertaining side i have gary Busey, and then on the knowledgeable side i have people like alan watts and carl sagan terence mckenna so it's all just things that i've gotten plenty of messages of people that have said that it just makes them think which is what my main goal is <laughs> right yeah so it seems like your mission is being accomplished all right let's check out the professor you look at our computing tower today 
and you say, I have the power to program a world inside of a computer. Well, imagine in the future where you have even more power than that. And you can create characters that have, for example, free will or their own perception of free will. So this is a world, and I program in the laws that govern that world. That world will have its own laws of physics and chemistry and biology. Now, you're a character in that world, and you think you have free will, and you say, I want to invent a computer. So you do. Hey, I want to create a world in my computer. And then that world creates a world in its computer. <laughs> and then you have simulations all the way down. Lay out all these universes and throw a dart. Which of these universes are you most likely to hit? The original one that started it? Or the countless simulations, the daughter simulations that uh, unfolded thereafter? You're going to hit a sim you're going to hit one of the simulations. That's you great. <laughs> that is great. I and had so a I got a DM from Diplo and he was like, "Your videos give me anxiety. Please stop making them." <laughs> I was like, "That could be good or bad." Yeah, <laughs> you're giving Diplo anxiety. I would say that's an accomplishment. Yes, <laughs> yes. Like it's people that make this like really, really like fun like music. Exactly. And yeah. They're like, uh, like, dude, you made just major too laser. Much. Let's relax. Yeah. <laughs> like, <it's> chill out. <laughs> Cool. Okay, so with this, you said you have multiple voices. So who was the voice on this one? This is Neil deGrasse Tyson. Okay. And then how are you grabbing all these various voice actors? So we just find the most influential clips that we like, mm -hmm. and then we sync the lips with the rabbit. Okay, so, so you're finding their, they, this is like from another piece of content. Exactly, yeah. And then you're creating the rabbit. So what are you doing as far as rights for that? Um, we are doing it on a artist interpretation. Okay. So that's what we have so far. We were originally going to do it on, uh, what's that one? Oh, Do the Right Thing. Mm -hmm. We were going to do the Samuel L. Jackson video, but uh, we didn't want to offend people mm -hmm. because apparently rabbits are very, they can... Easily offended? You know, <laughs> rabbits I, I are think easily like offended. Br'er Rabbit, apparently, okay. which I wasn't aware of. Mm -hmm. Someone informed me that that could be insulting uh -huh. so i think we like scratched that yeah, and we historically just like a, a a racially touchy character yeah right? like exactly. that whole storyline is you know historically which I, was, I don't know how i'm not aware of this yeah, like, it's, I feel... it's out there <laughs> it's out there yeah you're like go to splash mountain you're like is this still okay <laughs> <laughs> the answer is it's not but <laughs> that's good that that came up to you so you could yeah. kind of like uh, utilize that but your rabbit's very very different yeah and you've got the three he's got three eyes mm -hmm. so you said you designed him yes talk about how that process happened so he was originally just a vision in my mind mm -hmm. and that's where it kind of started I originally wanted him to have a desk and like the whole you know set up on the cloud but does he always have a computer on the cloud no it's usually he's usually just um, by <laughs> himself or sometimes he'll be holding like a mushroom or a prop but that's pretty much it mm -hmm. um, and it kind of just started with that and then we drew it and we weren't sure if he should have a fat Buddha belly or if he should be skinny and we just thought you know he should he should be a little overweight like mm -hmm. just you know he's healthy um, and then you know we had to design the the legs doing him crisscross because I think that he's just very calm and like a very meditative state even though our next video he will be dancing um, and yeah it just it took a while to figure out what his fur color should be and what his eye color should be and all of that but it after a while yeah it yeah took, it was how like many of these months. have you done so far um i think this is our sixth video sixth video and so they're all what like are some one of the minute. other topics another topic is the stoned ape theory i don't know if you've heard about mm -mm. that so the stoned ape theory is basically the theory that when we were in neanderthals like when we were walking on all fours um if you believe in that sort of thing um we were kind of in groups and you know, there were other animals around like deer or whatever, cows, dinosaurs, and mushrooms grow on poop, even like, cause you didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they somehow at one point came across this mushroom in the poop and ate it. And without knowing that they would become, you know, in another dimension, I guess, in their minds. And that created more neural pathways and helped them to think about things more profoundly and actually helped grow the brain and it's just a theory but i think it's really really interesting because we still don't know why our brains developed the way they did or how they got so much bigger than they originally were some people say it's from protein mm -hmm. some people say it's from the knowledge of other cultures who knows yeah like all, so many different <laughs> factors but yeah it seems like the this is an extension of your science driven articles then you absolutely. just needed to give it a visual. Absolutely. Which is yeah. really, really fascinating. And, yeah. I, and I love that melding of one thing you were passionate about that 
piqued the interest in this other thing and then you like cross them together. I love to spark conversation in this way because mm -hmm. I think so much conversation is about people like Trump or it's about people, you know, it's mm -hmm. not on situations or like concepts. Thing, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Or like theories or things like that or things that we really should be focusing on. Like how is our, you know, when we run out of oil in 50 years, what are we going to do about that? Mm -hmm. So it's like, I think that people, sh I would love to start people arguments about why our brains grew then why Kim Kardashian isn't talking to black China you know yeah <laughs> yeah it's, it, it, it pushes the focus a little bit which, exactly which is is interesting because you do have like so like your account like you do have like really hot photos of you on there <laughs> yeah. right so that that does bring a certain kind of audience yeah but now you're like ha I got you <laughs> Now you're gonna now think you about have to watch. Yeah, which yeah. I think is brilliant. It's kind of evened out the following too, because mm -hmm. I think that a lot of people will message me and be like, "Why do you post this? Like, just post your tits, you know?" Uh -huh. And it's like, I, but then I'm glad because that means yeah. they'll unfollow me and I'll have new people right. as an opportunity. Because you, you'll me. weed out the the morons. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. they, they will. They'll leave eventually. Yeah. But that you got them there at the at the beginning. Then uh -huh. you're like, maybe this is for you. Hey, you interested? You and there's think? an occasional butt pig still. So it's like they're confused. They don't know. <laughs> Should I stay? Should I go? Yeah, they're like, I'm just so torn. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't know how to feel about this gal anymore. So, so how long have you been posting the the professor on your account? Um, since the beginning of this year. Okay. So it's, he's pretty new, mm -hmm. but we just thought since they're so short, we should just continue to do them so he becomes more familiar. Mm -hmm. And I think at this point, he's growing quite a fan base. So. I and he doesn't have him. his own account. Like, that only lives Not on yet. your Instagram, yeah. right? I mean, we're starting to put him on YouTube, so I think he'll kind of live there so he can be in better quality as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but right now, he's just on Instagram hanging out, so yeah, he'll okay. spread eventually. So let, let's chat about uh, a shoot day with the professor. How does that work out? So um, Foster is actually shooting that in Washington. Mm -hmm. And Foster's really interesting because he has a production company called Movie Mountain. He lives in a treehouse, so that alone is pretty exciting. He's rad. <laughs> And I love him. He, where is he? <laughs> I know. He, uh, he has this studio where he basically will just hire people from Leica to come in and for maybe like two or three days they'll just move the pup right and sink it with the mouth and he's there because like, I can't be in Washington so he's there kind of making sure sending me clips and things like that so he's really the one who's been making it move forward um, so yeah so it takes like maybe a week to shoot it now like the the longest point was just getting his whole body designed but now that it's done we can kind of just find a clip and shoot it whenever mm -hmm. so yeah so what is the typical turnaround for what do you mean so like you i assume you find the clips you're like i like yeah. this clip yeah this is what i want to do you mm -hmm. give them some direction you send it to them yeah how long from when you found it to when you get it back to post on instagram it's about a week oh, depending fast. this one the one with neil degrasse tyson was a little longer because we wanted to to do the camera change of the uh computer mm -hmm. and the computer took a little longer to develop as well um, so that one took a little bit longer, but the Gary Busey one was 20 seconds and then we only had to make a tiny elephant for that. So that one only took like three days. Mm -hmm. They can be really fast or really small. Yeah. So. And then they're, when they're shooting for a day, because stop motion is, mm. you know, one shot oh my at God, a time. Tedious. Yeah. yeah. Have you been on set for any of those days? Yeah. I was on set when they were doing the first couple ones I was watching. I'd be sitting in there for like 20 minutes and oh my God, to be able to do that is like, Wow, that's incredible because I just would not have the patience to move a, a half a centimeter and check it and yeah. move it, move it. I would love to chat with a, a yeah. stop motion artist. Because yeah, they deserve like it. Such a thing. <laughs> yeah. Now, do you have a, a version? Like, you have one of these bunnies with you, or like, do you Ooh, have one? Do they give you I've one? I thought about that. I thought about one. making little dolls. Mm -hmm. I think it needs to happen. Yeah. A great idea you're gonna get there you'll get one yeah great okay yeah I'll give you a necklace oh i'm gonna rock that professor <laughs> so hard it's gonna be so great okay cool so that is a really cool project that you can see on sarah's uh instagram and youtube and on youtube um marissa in the booth she wants to know what material is the rabbit made of He's made out of silicone, okay, and his eyes are made out of plastic, I believe. Um, I don't know if everyone, anyone's ever seen Norman, the the like 
I think it's Norman. It's like the a stop motion pretty recently. It's the same eyes that they used on Norman. So mm -hmm. I was pretty proud of that. Good. <laughs> but yeah, it's just silicone. And then you have to pour it and then re-pour it so there's no bubbles in it. And then you have to paint it and then you have to cast it again and then repaint it. So it's all like a, just making sure that there's no like rips or tears in it. But yeah, just silicone. Yeah, how many uh, models did you have to go through to get to this one? Three. Three. So there was the original, um, just making sure it looked okay, and then that one had bubbles in it already, so mm -hmm. we had to do it again, and then paint it, and then we did it again just for safety. But it is kind of cool that we do have those other ones, like as, you know, to look back on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I would love for you, because like, <laughs> You've got your modeling photos. Like you need to just go onto like a beach and like have him on there, like have a sexy shot, and he's just like also. You're so right. So hot. On I should the do beach. a stop motion with me in it. Yeah, that would be amazing. I think Look people would love is. that. Wow. It would be like you would have to maybe like split screen a little bit. Mm -hmm. You'd have to mask and like have him a little bit separate. But yeah, like you I'll were be telling me students. before, you were inspired by the Neverending Story. Like, yeah, they did that stuff in there. It's oh. a thing. Oh my God! That dog dragon. Mm -hmm. Whose idea was that? Somebody. I want to know who where ate one of your poop mushrooms. Where is that puppet at? I bet someone has bought that for like millions of dollars. Oh yeah, it's sitting in the back of their mansion. They're having a great time. <laughs> How big is our is the professor? Um, he's pretty. I'd say maybe like two feet. Okay. He's not too big, but he's not too small. Yeah. We, we had a. a, a a guest here they came in the the sea griffin productions they had a puppet for their project uh who is about this big yeah and he he was just like adorably scary yeah they're yeah. kind of weird yeah yeah his eyes move too so <gasps> separately you, okay yeah so that he can be like looking at you mm -hmm. and it looks they look pretty real do they all move on their own yeah they can articulate separately yeah so he can be looking at everything mm -hmm. this you is can't all get away knowing. there he is oh. oh i had a dog that looked just like that so i used to like pretend that that was that dog yeah yeah it was pretty exciting that's well, my childhood just this, uh, his name again a never-ending story falcor falcor like d'artagnan is the kid right or am i making I think, that up mm, i don't know i need to rewatch that sounds right never ending story i don't know that doesn't sound like you're making it up yeah any other inspirations um for, for Coraline. Mm -hmm. um uh, Danny Elfman, like so many just weirdos in the sci-fi realm yes, that are them. so inspiring. Yeah. I just feel like it gives me such like a, a feeling of excitement when I start a new project and when I watch old movies like this, it's just like endless inspiration. Yeah. You just can't, you can't stop because they don't make movies that look like that anymore. I know. And that's, okay, give me your opinion on this. Why do we not have cult classics or is it because maybe in like 20 years or 20, 40 years, like we will, they will be classics. But I just feel like movies from the 80s had so much flavor and like personality and I don't understand why we're making like sharknado now <laughs> yeah well i think it, it if, if you think of like the, the history of cinema cinema is like not that old right yeah. it's just over like a hundred years old that's true so you would think it was like eight years old mm -hmm. like if if we're going like every decade is a year in a, a, a toddler's life right yeah so when you're like eight you're like oh my gosh it's like everything's so magical okay you know and so now at that point in filmmaking people are like okay we can do this we can do this now what what magic can we encapsulate right because yeah. like the 70s they tried a little bit because mm -hmm. you know like the 20s was just like oh man there's moving pictures right yeah and then, like in the 30s it's a little bit more in the 40s then we, we start getting into like uh having music and sound and color and then we're like doing big epic movies mm -hmm. like we're in westerns we're going to other worlds now mm -hmm. but now i think at that point like so in 70s i think is where like star wars came in yeah and then that's where the 80s it's all the people who are inspired by that. Yeah. And they're like, oh, we can do, like... We can do And that? they're, like, pushing boundaries. <laughs> so now I feel like filmmaking is, is pushing boundaries in a different way and more in a more computer-generated mm. way. Yeah. Uh, and it's just going to take somebody to, like, break the mold. That's true. You know, and then they're, they're breaking things in the set. But also... Things are turning around so fast now. You think? What because do you mean like with turning Netflix, around? Right. Oh yeah. So in the '80s, or like, it, like historically in cinema, it's like okay, yeah, sure. Like it takes a while, and it's like fine, right? It's gonna take five years to make this movie, mm -hmm. but we're making this movie. Yeah. But now the demand is like, I gave you money, I need a movie in three months. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, so it you can't turns do into Sharknado. Oh man. You know, so it's just a different kind of world. But I think it's great that you 
are taking on this task because you could have easily done this project CG. Yeah. But you chose true. stop motion. And some people even think that it is CG. Yeah. So uh, it's this is like it, is it reminds me of like California Raisins. Oh yes. And uh, like old Michael Jackson yeah. music videos. That makes me so happy. Yeah, it's great. I saw that I was like, this girl knows. Did you She's ever see a Barbarella? Yes. Oh my god. That's, I love Barbarella. That's me in a movie. Yeah. Like, I love that movie. She's the Anyone best. listening, if you haven't seen Barbarella, it's an watch adventure. Barbarella. Yes. Yeah. I just want to like just wear all her stuff all the time. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. So now your next project uh, is more of a comedic thing. Uh, no, it's not. What's your next one? Um, it's the short film. The short film. Yeah. And what's that one about, if you can talk about it? Yeah. Um, so it's basically me and my friend and Foster, who's going to be a cinematographer, we are taking an RV and we're going from Northern California up to British Columbia. And we're, we picked the most magical spots upon the way. And um, we are going to tell a story of self-discovery. And it's about, like, for some people, maybe it's not everybody, but for some people, including me, the city is very stressful. And I think that it's just so much energy in one place and it's just hard to focus. And so we're kind of trying to, like, depict that visually through sounds and, you know, visions and things like that of how stressful the city is in black and white. And then um, once you kind of transition into realizing that that's what's causing your anxiety, then she, like, will click into this new world of natural kind of inspiration, like mountains and Mount Shasta and, like, Diablo Lake and just beautiful, insane places. And then I had the idea of original scoring, which I haven't decided what it will sound like yet, but I really love um, Edward Scissorhands-type sounds. And uh, then I want to incorporate a little bit of CG at night when there's a full moon, and I'm kind of meeting him, a cyclops, and then that's going to be like me in my weirdest parts of me envisioned into a cyclops. I love that. So it's going to be interesting to execute, but I love challenges, so <laughs> here we go. <laughs> yes, and, and so you have not shot this yet. No. Well, this is have July. you ever taken this drive? From California to I, yeah, Northwest. I've taken I've taken this drive not to British Columbia, but mm -hmm. I've gone up to the top of uh, Washington mm -hmm. maybe twice. Yeah, so I I've seen definitely a lot of the locations, but um, I've never even thought to like shot something on this scale. But I think that it's just so beautiful on its own that it'll be easy to incorporate a storyline to it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I yeah. think it would be great because I've done that drive before in an RV. It's amazing, and I like by myself from from seattle to la and it mm -hmm. was just by it's gorgeous by myself and it was like <gasps> was it know, fun it was, was it great quiet? I had, it a was amazing <laughs> i was like i want to stop here okay yeah <laughs> it's great just go on hikes and shit yeah it was awesome. really really wonderful but then to to wrap that into a project mm -hmm. i think is brilliant i'm excited and you have a storyline you know that is established you know because there's one way you could do it you could shoot it vlog style right uh -huh, yeah you could go and just be like let's see what happens like mm -hmm. i've done filmmaking that way which yeah. is fun where you're like i'm just gonna capture some footage yeah let's see what we make mm -hmm. but then there's also you go with the plan i think i'm just so obsessed with sci-fi yeah. that i just want to incorporate that into everything mm -hmm. very like where the wild things are yeah. i feel like it feels like like an anime uh-huh and I, washington is all like forks washington is already where twilight space so i feel like and bigfoot like there's bigfoot pizza and it's all just very kind of mysterious so i think that that energy will really flow into the video as well yeah okay so you said the cyclops is what you feel is like is a version of you yeah why why a cyclops um, I think that I have like an obsession with eyes, mm -hmm. and I love obviously with the professor. Yeah, and I thought I Cyclops. saw they were connected. Yeah. yeah, and I really love Greek mythology as well, and I just think that it signifies. I mean, it is that the word? It's sig significant. No, it no. Uh, embodies a lot of like deeper meaning i guess and there's yeah, a well, lot like of... right here is supposed to be like the seat yeah. of your intuition right? yeah like your third eye yeah so i think that would be like what i'm meeting kind of and like 
really getting back in touch with that weirdo part of myself, which took me a long time to really accept. But I think that's like the most beautiful part of myself. Yeah. So I think I'm just going to try to depict that. Even if it doesn't make sense, I'll understand what it means. Yeah. Embrace your weirdo. <laughs> embrace your weirdo. Like we had a interview with another female filmmaker and she was like, ah, I'm weird. I don't know. And I was like, it's great to be weird. Exactly. Like, I'm so weird. And embrace <laughs> it. And it seems like you are doing that as well. So you've got some projects that you are performing into coming up? Um, yes, I have a movie. I have one movie called Perfect, and that's coming out in September. And then another one is a horror movie called The Row, and that's in July. Mm -hmm. So those are probably, I think Perfect is the one I'm most excited about because it's like the most, I think that one might be a classic. And not just because I'm in it, but because the storyline is just crazy. It makes it makes sense but when you're watching it you wouldn't think that it would be a mainstream thing mm -hmm. you know because you're seeing movies like tag and like <laughs> all those ones but yeah i'm really excited about that one good okay so you've done you've done comedies you've done some sci-fi stuff and then you've done horror is yeah. there or anything that you have taken away uh, as a performer that you can utilize in your filmmaking mm -hmm. that, of these different genres and how they are made i think that for my project i'm going to be doing i'll pull mostly from the sci-fi one that I've done because um, I saw how they could incorporate animation without making it look fake mm -hmm. and um, I also learned a lot from listening to people that are kind of on the same wavelength and I think that's really helped my story grow as well because I think for a lot of people you get a storyline and you won't listen to anybody you're just like this is mine I'm not gonna do whatever your, your ideas suck but really like taking that in even if they say hey your idea sucks but listen to this instead of that and then maybe I'll be upset in the in the zone right there but then the next day I'll be like, and that actually does make it a lot better. Yeah. So I think being open to like change is part of it too. Yeah, that's good. And that's probably something that you saw on, yeah, you know, exactly. working on different sets. And, that, oh, and yeah. that's something that I always, you know, have to remind myself, like it, it took me a long time because I started mm -hmm. at the beginning of like, no, but this is, yeah. this is my vision. I'm an <laughs> yeah. artist. Yeah. Leave me alone. <laughs> but, you know, like you can hear it. You can like swallow your pride for a mm -hmm. second and, you know, like maybe like steam about it. Mm -hmm. And then later you're like, Oh yeah, that is better. <laughs> yeah. But it's not like because you get to step away. But then uh -huh. when you find people that you can collaborate with on a regular basis, then you have like a safe zone. Yeah. You know, you're like these people, I can hear their their things. Exactly. I can either take it or leave it, but like they're not going to be offended if I don't utilize their idea, but mm -hmm. I I'm open to listening to them because I know they're not dangerous to me. Yeah, it's so important to have a group of people that aren't just yes men mm -hmm. because that's so easily how you can fall into a shitty project. Mm -hmm. It's just being like, hey, does this sound good? And they're like, yeah, dude, you're doing so good. And it's like the next Teletubby movie and yeah. you're like, why didn't anyone tell why me? Why didn't somebody say something? <laughs> good Lord. What other advice do you have for our aspiring creatives out there? Um, I would say, oh my God, there's a lot, <laughs> but I would say even if you don't have a budget, even if you don't even know where you're going to start, even if you don't have a past of that, even if you didn't go to school for it, um, just try to write down your idea in the most detailed way possible. And if you have any questions, just search it. It's all on Google. So I feel like you can get started. Oh, and Unsane, that movie by Steven Soderbergh, who's like a multimillionaire director, producer, um, did his most recent movie entirely on iPhone. Sure did. And it made millions of dollars, and it barely has any editing. It's all kind of chalked up to the music and the acting. So just remember that when you're getting into something is, even if it, you don't think it's working out or if you don't have all the you know, lights or whatever, it's still very possible. Yeah, like I, I look at that and I see that the the big wigs mm -hmm. are using a camera that we all have in our pocket. <laughs> I know. So because they're so good now. Yeah, yeah, they're so good. And even if it's it, 4K. The, the quality was lower, it's it's how you're using it. Mm -hmm. You know, so see, and you can color correct a lot. Yeah, you can do a lot, and then like putting like different like. Luts on it, different looks on your film, on yeah. your, your footage. There's things you can do in editing. There's, mm -hmm. It's just so wonderful. Like It's a wonderful time to be a creative right now because yeah. there's so much at your disposal. There's so much information at your disposal. So Absolutely. for you, like you, you also seem like an internet learner like me. Mm -hmm. What kind of resources can you recommend to our, our filmmakers out there? Um, I took a film class online that was just free, um, mm -hmm. and I... I don't have the link to that. I could probably send that to you later okay. to put on the screen if that's a thing. Yeah, do you know the name of it? You don't um, remember. 
I think it might just be like film school or something like okay. that. But that helped me a lot because it kind of, again, went back to showing this really amazing short film this person had made on like no money and they did it all in their mom's basement. So that kind of like helped me get my ego back with all of that. And um, I read a lot. I pull my inspiration from old myths and theories. Uh, I think that's something that really helps. And I think like acting is something that will help you to understand a lot because you know even if you're a shitty actor you understand what you at least need to improve on so mm -hmm. yeah I think those are like the main points yeah I think that's really great so like the internet just as a source there's lots of filmmaking yeah. resources and all free. over the internet yeah and then taking inspiration from things that already like entertain you yeah and you're interested in I think yes. it's a really really awesome uh thing to to utilize because you want to start with a project saying what would I watch I yeah. think that's like the number one thing yeah because you're gonna spend a lot of time with it mm -hmm. and that's what happens to me is when I'm coming up with projects and I'm like do I want to spend the next year <laughs> with this idea so yeah I, I'm a commitment folk yeah <laughs> I'm just like oh Cause you're saddled in once you get going yeah what you get you want to like go for it but once you finish you're just like oh, this is the best awesome. feeling oh my god it's incomparable yeah and then utilizing social media as an outlet like the, you can post your work you can mm -hmm. put it out in the world for free for people to see and you never know immediately who's see it you yeah never know diplo might look at your stuff he might be scared <laughs> just move on you might scare diplo yeah <laughs> awesome well thank you so much <laughs> thank you for sharing all of your wonderful filmmaking inspiration and your career path yes i love that and this is just goes to show you that like no matter what career you're already on if you have the itch mm -hmm. to start making a film Go do it. So true. Go do it. Be like Sarah. Sarah, do tell it. everyone where they can find you on the internet. You can find me on Instagram, Crotchy, K-R-O-T-C-H-Y, the same on YouTube, and Sarah McDaniel on Facebook. And just remember, just get weird, man. Just go with it. It's okay. It's fine. That's wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> awesome. Get weird with it, guys. Uh, Mary Lou Mandel. You can find me all over the internet at Mary Lou Mandel. If you prefer watching the video version of On the Fly Filmmaking, you can subscribe to Popcorn Talk on YouTube. If you prefer to listen to the podcast version, you can find us on iTunes. Rate us five stars. Give us thumbs up. Subscribe. Tell us what you want to hear. Tell us who you want to talk to. And also, show us your films because I want to yes. see what you guys are making. I want to see how you're getting weird. We'll see you guys next time. <laughs> From producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, we would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network.